morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're deep in the rotation right now, having me up here. <laughs> my friends aren't going to believe this, so I'm going to take a selfie real quick. This is a very important moment of my life. Okay. Um, everybody that comes up here always says they're nervous. I'm not, and that probably makes my wife very nervous. So um, I, I'm Cork Snyder. I have taught statistics for 34 years. I'm much more comfortable talking about the normal curve and the beautiful inflection point at the first standard deviation, but <clears throat> here we are. This is a little bit autobiographical for me. Oh, one more thing. I, I was thinking about this. We're talking about setting for a new preacher. This might be the greatest fundraiser ever. After you're done with me, we might want to pass the plate around. This might work <laughs> out really well. Okay, so um, this is somewhat autobiographical. I'm sure you can all relate. You know those moments where you do a lot of things for somebody or God puts something on your heart to be a doer and you do it and then you get a lot of blowback and that's really hard and I, it's happened quite a bit to me. God's really called me to do some really cool things over the last 10 years and so I started studying it and a little bit of this comes from just a walk I took with Bob Chenoweth about six months ago. We were talking about that. Bob does a lot of really cool things for people. And he is, he's kind of, we kind of have the same kind of stories. And it's hard, you know. Um, I wanted to start with a super-duper famous quote from Teddy Roosevelt in 1910. It's called Man in the Arena. You may have seen it, you may have not. It's so famous that LeBron James had it on his shoes, Man in the Arena, during a playoff game one time. And it's, it's just about how hard it is to be the doer and to endure the criticism. Uh, which button is it? The, there's only two here, so it's got to be there. All right. I was 50%. That's what I knew. I knew it. Okay. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where their doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. I could almost stop there and sit down. And that is unbelievable. That's obviously from Teddy Roosevelt in 1910. Um, from personal experience, I've kind of, this is not like scientific. This is like just me. So <laughs> some general principles from, from um, human nature. When you're a doer, people typically will question it right away. Why are you doing that? What are you doing? It's, I think it's just kind of human nature, and I've learned that sometimes my friends are trying to protect me or whatever, but it's kind of human nature, but you do have to get used to that when you have a brilliant idea or you want to do something. You've got to get used to that. Um, I've also discovered that when time passes, I've had people tell me 20 years later, I remember when you did this for me. Like, that's cool. Time has a tendency to reward you in the end. So sometimes when you're doing something for somebody, you gotta give it time. I've, I've learned that as well. Um, one rule I've heard, and this is kind of a funny rule, is that no one wants to be, you to be more successful than, th than them but your parents. That's it. <laughs> so sometimes when you're doing something, you're doing well and you're getting attention for that, there's just kind of a natural jealousy of that. And so I'm sure you guys have experienced some of those things as well. Um, Typically, we like the doer, but we don't always help them. However, we have a tendency to help the troublemaker, the one that's complaining, because we want them to stop complaining. So I'm going to discuss all of these things. And in my life as an educator, I've seen all this stuff in education. You've seen it everywhere. So this is, I think, some of this is pretty typical. This is my father-in-law many years ago. Unbelievable. He's helped a lot of people. I've asked him one time, how do you handle that when they don't respond a certain way, and he just kind of, he said this one time, the people who really need help are so hard to help. They have limited capacity to thank. If it's easy to help someone, in all likelihood, anybody could have. 
And <laughs> that really hit home. You know, I really, I, I've thought about that a lot. And so when you get involved with really helping somebody, whatever their situation is, I think that's something to remember. So Wayne's a pretty smart guy. And obviously, people often attack the doer's motives. Did that happen to Jesus? Of course. Okay. Um, your light will shine on yourself a little bit when you do something. So you've got to be careful, you know, because sometimes when you do something, people will learn more about you, and that might be uncomfortable. Like when my wife, who's really cool, you know, she, when Sandy does anything, people are like, she's like, she's like encased in glass, and like people look at her like a museum piece, like, oh my gosh, that is so well made, that's so beautiful. When I do something, I draw attention to myself, I'm like a building with like scaffolding, and they say, when's that scaffolding going to be taken down? It's been like seven years with that stuff on there, so, you know, you, you know, depending on the kind of person you are, you do have to be prepared to be examined. Um, obviously, attacking motives is something that Jesus went through, okay? This is Mark 2, 1 through 6. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large number that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, these are doers, bringing a paralyzed man carrying, carried by four of them. Uh, since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat uh, the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Of course, he gets blowback here. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? So this kind of stuff happens, obviously, even to our Lord. He, and, he, and he's often surprised at people's reaction. He, and he reacts, calling them a brood of vipers and some of those negative terms. But even Jesus, when he was doing something for somebody, often got criticism. Uh, some biblical principles of being a doer. These are kind of harsh. I, I read these and go, these are pretty, pretty harsh. Something to think about. Um, the first one is just be careful when you get involved in a situation. Really examine it and be wise about it because the Bible does warn us about that. Do not give dog what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear them into pieces. I, the, I heard this is don't cast pearls to swine. That's when I originally learned that. And so that's something you've got to really be careful, careful with. I've often gotten involved in situations that probably I shouldn't have, that didn't have, you know, a positive outcome in it, likelihood being a stat teacher. Okay, the other one is uh, from Matthew 8, 18. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to the cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came and said, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. This guy's ready to roll. And Jesus said, foxes have, and have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple that said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. So he is even warning this doer, you know, are you sure you're ready for this? And that's something, again, whatever you take on, something at work, something spiritual, a, you take on a neighborhood Bible study, whatever it is, you've got to be ready for all these things, okay? And Jesus warns of that. This one came up a couple weeks ago. I think Mark was talking about it, and I hadn't thought about it. Because, you know, so many times we do things for others, and you're surprised at the reaction you get back. And then I found a fraction that a teacher, like me, really, a stat teacher really likes. And I thought, whoa, this is great. So, and watch the reaction of Jesus at the end. He's even surprised at the ratio that thanks him. He's even shocked. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into the village, uh, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priests. And they went, and they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. 
when I read that, it, that was almost a relief to me to know that some of the efforts I've made, you know, they may pay off later. But, you know, it, the other thing is some people, like my wife, she's incredible at doing stuff for others without thinking something's going to happen in return. I'm not so good at it. I, I don't want anything in return, but I always assume a friendship will be the result, and that doesn't always happen, and I've had to get used to that, and it's this stuff like this is very motivating to me. If Jesus can do this, then I can too. Um, here's a couple of things you, you can do to encourage yourself as a doer. I'm going to give you some tips on how to encourage other people that are doing in a second here. Uh, this is one of my, these are two of my favorites. Hebrews 12, 3, considered him who endures his opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. I, I love anything that has endurance. I'm a bike rider, I'm a coach, I'm, a, I'm an athlete. Anything that involves endurance, I, I love those kind of things. So that's something I can do. I can endure. And I like the competition with myself to endure, especially when it's something that's good for Christ. And then Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. That is awesome. And as I get older and older, I see that day obviously coming where I will reap that harvest. And those, those are amazingly encouraging words. Now, I'm going to give you some cool ideas of how to encourage people that are doers. This is such a sensitive topic to me that typically when I see people on my work side, my personal life, I try to encourage people that are, that are really going above and beyond because I feel that nobody else is. And I really enjoy doing this. I'm going to give you some things that I do to people, for people. Uh, if you're in a position to do so, try to reward the doer, not the complainer. If you're the boss somewhere in some organization, and education to me is just the prime example, the people that complain a lot, their needs get met. The doers often don't have their needs met. And when I was the athletic director at my school, I made sure the doers got rewarded, the complainers didn't. That's a really important principle, and it's very, very powerful. So if you're in that position, I highly recommend you do that. Um, doers are often built up with just a few words, just a few words. And we often complain about our phone being a distraction. I text people all the time, hey, nice job on this. It takes me three seconds, and it is very, very, very powerful. Um, and this one is my favorite one. Um, I keep a stack of generic cards and envelopes. They're just like thank you cards in my desk drawer at school. And I will send people handwritten notes all the time, constantly. And the, my favorite one for this is, since I had coached basketball forever, uh, these, when long-term coaches re retire, 20, 25, 30 years, I'll send them a nice note. Hey, great job. I understand the sacrifices of summer, Christmas break, blah, blah, blah. And I'll go over all that. Three times I've had coaches reply to me, you are the only person that wrote me a note after 30 years of coaching. Notes are powerful, and they're a lost art. So I would highly recommend you do that. So, Okay. And be wise how much you take on. I'm talking to myself right here, but be wise how much you take on. So that is my uh, check your motives. I guess I had a little more check my motives. And is anything else? Stay rested. Yeah, rest is a good one. Jesus even got on a boat and got away from crowds, as you guys know. So, I forgot what else I wrote here. It's nothing else. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that, that's really from the heart. That's something that I struggled with that I've had to actually study, I study up on. And I feel much more prepared at the last couple of years just studying the Bible. Because and, and, those are things I want to do. I've told, I'm almost 60. I'm, I'm 57. I, I told my wife, I want to stay in shape, and I want to give back. Those are my goals the next, you know, the rest of my life. And to do that, you've got to have some parameters, and you've got to have some a wisdom behind you to be able to do that. So thank you for that. And um, I got you guys out a little bit early, so you guys can go to your Super Bowl party. How wonderful. <laughs> All right. Do I pray now, or do you? Uh, you can pray. I can pray. All right, here we go. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for um, this congregation. Thank you for all the, the teachers, for the kids, and the teachers for the adults as well. And we thank you for uh, all the people this week, particularly Nathan, that um, worked on the building. And that's just a, <laughs> that's a lot of work. And we're thankful for 
you know, all that we have in terms of uh, technology here, and it's, it's uh, growing and doing well. We pray for a wonderful day today. Um, we pray for if people are going to a Super Bowl party for just um, great conversations and maybe slipping in conversations about the Lord during all this, this American holiday, so to speak. And we just thank you so much for all that we have here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.